This is Think Energy, the podcast that helps you better understand the fast-changing world of energy through conversations with game changers, industry leaders, and influencers. So join me, Dan Sege, as I explore both traditional and unconventional facets of the energy industry. Hey everyone, welcome back. As Canadians, we're quite familiar with the trials of enduring harsh winters. While most of us aren't residing in igloos, at least not your average Joes, we've all had our fair share of snowfalls turning homes into winter wonderland. Those long, cold and snowy winters present unique challenges, not just for us, but for the energy sector as well. In this special episode, I'll be kicking off part one of our winter highlight reel. Today, we'll revisit cool clips from previous Think Energy episodes where we dove into the winter-related challenges impacting the energy sector. As I've engaged with various experts in the field, we've explored the heightened electricity needs and demands for heating in sub-zero temperatures and the increased risks of infrastructure damage. Our first highlight is with Sean Carr, Manager of Customer Experience at Hydro Ottawa. Sean will be shedding light on cold climate heat pumps. He discusses how these innovative solutions not only reduce carbon emissions, but also prove to be an effective way for Canadians to navigate our climate's diverse temperature extremes from scorching summers to bone chilling winters. Now, what is a cold climate heat pump? And is that what Canadians should purchase? Yeah, it, I mean, it's a good question. And so advancements in air source heat pump technology now means that there are heat pump options that are, I would say, far better suited or adapted to operating in the cold Canadian uh, climate. And those are referred to as cold climate heat pumps. What makes them different than a traditional air source heat pump is it's really just some of the equipment that's contained within the unit. So they use variable capacity compressors, inverters, improved heat exchanger designs and controls uh, to maximize heating capacity at colder temperatures while maintaining high efficiencies during milder conditions. And so what that means is they can still redirect heat from outside to inside your home quite efficiently, even in conditions down to minus 20 degrees Celsius or less. So to classify as a cold climate heat pump under um, the federal uh, Canada Greener Homes Grant, which we can talk more about later, heat pumps must have a coefficient of performance, a COP of 1.8 or higher at minus 15 degrees Celsius. So that means that the heat pump must maintain an efficiency of at least 180% at minus 15 Celsius. And just again, as a reminder, the most efficient gas burning furnaces out there have an efficiency of like 96 or 97%. Okay, I've got another follow-up question here for you. Can cold climate heat pumps meet the heating demand on their own? Or are there circumstances where backup heat is required. Yeah, so I guess the sh the short answer is it depends. Uh, you know whether or not you need a backup heat source for your heat pump is going to depend. You know on a number of factors. You know, for example, the type of heat pump you purchase, uh, the climate zone you live in, uh, and the design and efficiency of of your home. So, in some parts of Canada that are milder, a heat pump might be all you need, but in other colder areas, you will most certainly need a, a backup system. Uh, and that's because, you know, as the temperature drops, heat pumps start to become less efficient at heating. And when the temperature gets to a certain point, you know, the unit will shut off altogether or it'll work in tandem with your uh, backup heat system. And 
that shutoff point is going to depend on your unit, the unit that you chose. But typically, uh, that shutoff point could be anywhere from minus 15 Celsius down to minus 25 Celsius or lower. So, you know, what I will also say is the heat pump system is not typically sized to deliver a hundred percent of the peak heating load um, that your home is designed for, because that could lead to an oversized system that might cycle on and off. So it's really important, I would say, that if you're considering a heat pump, that you work with a mechanical contractor for selecting and specifying uh, a heat pump and a backup heat source that's going to be right for your home, you know, right for your budget and and your needs. And there are many options for a backup. Uh, heat system. Some, some heat pumps come with a integrated electric resistant heating system that functions as a backup system at very low temperature. So think of that as just like an electric resistance element, like a, a hair dryer that's been installed in, inside your duct. However, there are also um, natural gas backup options, such as traditional high efficiency furnaces that can be used as a backup source if your home happens to be centrally ducted. And and these are often uh, referred to as hybrid heating systems. Okay, something a little more technical here. Are air source and ground source heat pumps the most common types for Canadians? And maybe you can talk to us about what are some of the differences. Yeah, I, I I would say that they're they are certainly the two most common types for Canadians. I I mean, air source is by far the most common uh, type for Canadians, followed by by ground source. Really, the main difference with a ground source heat pump is they actually use the ground as the source of heat in the winter and as a reservoir to reject heat removed from the home in the summer. And so rather than the air being the heat transfer mechanism, it's actually the ground. The main advantage of ground source heat pumps is they are not subject to the extreme temperature fluctuations we get uh, with air because the ground is a more constant temperature source throughout the year. And, And what that ends up ultimately doing is it actually can drive higher efficiencies. The downside to ground source heat pump typically is that they are more expensive to install. There's more labor involved and they may also require landscape alterations. So they may not be suitable for for all property types, depending on whether you've got the space and the land to be able to accommodate the loops that need to get installed in the ground and so on. So, you know, that said, they are um, they are very efficient, which means greater energy savings and ground source heat pumps tend to work well in, in almost all climates because they're not impacted by big fluctuations in, in outdoor air temperature. Now, if you're in the market for upgrading the heating and cooling system, a cold climate heat pump just might be the right fit. I'm hoping this information will be helpful as you do your research. Okay, moving on. We have a quick snippet from our episode on being a good neighbor to our trees in the age of climate change. In this interview, I speak to Hydro Ottawa's Nick Levac. He shares his perspective on tree trimming and how our company aims to strike a balance between ensuring public safety and infrastructure maintenance. In Ottawa, our winters, consisting of mixed freezing rain, frigid winds, and record snowfalls, can cause chaos for all of us. And our trees also bear the brunt of it. Here's what Nick had to say. Nick, pruning and especially removal of interfering trees often cause controversy. In an age of climate change and environmental responsibility, what do you tell folks that object to or have concerns about the important work you do to help keep the lights on and trees safe? Yeah, that's that's a great question. We, uh, you know, our, our, I think you hit 
the last word there and your question kind of hits on our main goal of, of everything that we do here at Hydro is safety. So uh, not only are we looking out for the public safety, uh, ensuring that trees aren't coming down on the line and, and staying energized, but we're also looking out for our worker safety. Um, so as we're going through, uh, we, we try to do um, preventative maintenance, so to speak. Uh, so very much like you get your oil changed in a car or you put uh, your winter tires on, uh, this time of year uh, we're, we're trying to trim trees away from the lines to make sure they don't come in contact uh, that avoids outages uh, unplanned outages especially because um, it, you know it's one thing to get a phone call to say hey your power is going to be out because we're doing preventative maintenance whether it's tree trimming or upgrading the electrical system it's another thing to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and have your lights out and the heat off and everything and it's unexpected and, and you're trying to get ready or you know kids are at home or whatever so uh, preventative maintenance is the big thing and, and we try to educate our customers that uh, what we're doing out there is really just to make sure that um, we can decrease outages and especially those unplanned outages. Um, the other thing that we look at when we're pruning trees is, is the tree health and I know Greg's going to get into this I think a little bit later on but uh, just looking at the species of tree and how we trim them to make sure that the health of the tree uh, is, is also a huge uh, interest for our arborists that are up there. They're all certified uh, trained arborists uh, with uh, some um, extra training on the electrical side because obviously we're trimming around live electrical lines. But when they get up into a tree, they're looking at the health of the tree. Uh, there's a lot of stuff once they get up into the canopy of the tree that they notice that you can't see from the ground. So they're, they're taking into account and they're taking out any dead wood or anything in there and, and try to not only, uh, like I mentioned before, getting those clearances that we need for the electrical side, but also trying to enhance the tree growth uh, away from our lines and looking at the, the health of the tree by taking any dead wood or anything out of it. Now, as you all know, trees play a vital role in our city from a sustainability lens, but also in beautifying our cityscape. Thankfully, our teams are looking out for every possible way for trees to not only coexist with hydroelectric infrastructure without causing unplanned power outages, but to thrive no matter what kind of winter we're having. Navigating winter and climate change is going to continue to be a hot topic of conversation in 2024, especially as we face harsher weather conditions and our reliance on electricity increases. So thanks again for joining me for this part one of our winter highlight reel. Please tune in on December 18th for part two. Folks, Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a happy and safe holiday. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Think Energy Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening. And to find out more about today's guest or previous episodes, visit thinkenergypodcast.com. I hope you'll join us again next time as we spark even more conversations about the energy of tomorrow.